Good evening, everyone. And um, welcome to this uh, symposium that we thought we would hold because WITS RHI turns 20 years old today. We've had a number of events, uh, but we thought it would be nice to actually reflect not on the history of our institute, but actually what's been happening in the health sector. We started as five people in 1994, and we were called RHRU. And by 2014, we'd become 550 people, and we changed our name to WITS RHI. And for those of you who know us well, we have many problems with the WRHI, so we've abandoned the W, it's too difficult, and we're now known as WITS RHI. So in those 20 years, we thought it would be useful just to reflect on what's really happened in the health services and to actually look at what the challenges are in the health sector at the moment. The first speaker who's going to present in this symposium is Dr. Neil Cameron, who's a public health specialist. Most of my focus is going to be on, um, on looking at the importance of coverage and immunization and other health programs. So it's there to monitor trends, to guide strategy, to prevent outbreaks, and for elimination and eradication, to identify areas needing resources, and to link service delivery to disease risk. So, for UHC to succeed, I don't think we need to worry about whether there are vertical or horizontal programs. We need to develop the capacity to perform economic evaluation, where we look not just at the costs, but at some of the other issues related to equity, related to burden of disease, but we include the costs, we include the strategic issues, we include the packages. And that way, I think we will get better outcomes. Medicine at the moment is going through an unprecedented stage of huge introspection. Okay, and part of that is just because data sets are available for, for this introspection. All those things you were told by your professor of medicine and you kind of gospel. Now suddenly you can go onto Google and get 16 different opinions and What's worse is you can get the original data sets and reanalyze them and say, oh, they got that kind of wrong. Or where did you make the, that intuition? Or your stats actually in the, originally you didn't get that right. And this has meant that lots of the holy grails are starting to be tackled. I'm going to show you a few of them in just a moment. If we're looking at public policy, we need to think about power. If we're looking at public policy, we need to think about how to create countervailings of power, countervailing uh, leverages of power so that you can act against interests that like the, uh, the, the, main, uh, the, the, the prevailing uh, actions to continue. How do you act against state that is advancing a set of policy agendas that are hostile to, to good public policy? How do you act against private sector interests that are hostile to good public policy? We want to act, one of the great case studies that we want to draw around, if you are interested in trying to understand how do we move policy around sugar, is how were, you, how were we able, over 20, 30, 40 years, able to fundamentally change the consciousness around tobacco? What are the lessons to be learned from that experience, and how do we deploy those lessons into understanding, uh, deploy those lessons into the sugar industry and apply that as we go forward? Vice Chancellor, let me tell you why things ramped up from 2009. It's because I became the DDG for HIV, TB, and maternal health in 2008. <laughs> I think what, what, uh, what's true is that we've been ramping up slowly from about 2005, 2006. If you just look at the antiretroviral numbers, for example, you'll see that we're creeping up. So while it seemed like the bureaucrats were not doing anything in the, in the context of what has been called AIDS denialism, there's been a lot going on in the background. But I think that what is important tonight is that we have heard some remarkably important messages. And I think that they all come back to essentially three or four major themes. Firstly, that we do need to have the information and that in fact a lot of the information is not good and that we do not often apply that information in intelligent ways. But what we also don't do is, is that we do not really address the fundamental reasons for disease and unwellness. And those are often the basics within our society, poverty, lack of health systems, the, the issues that we really are not grappling with. And that really is in many ways, I think, what 
is so important about the whole FITS RHI and what they have achieved over so many years.